Welcome to Type-C Tech Reviews. Today, we're gonna to be unboxing the Asus Tough Gaming 34-inch Ultrawide. We're gonna do the unboxing and get the first initial impressions. And if at any point during the video, you wanna check out this exact same monitor for yourselves, all the Amazon links below for the US, UK, and Canada. But let's get this thing unboxed. And let's get this thing undone. Now I will say, one of the biggest pros of this monitor that I think is gonna be, I'm not quite sure yet, but this thing has 550 nits, which is crazy, and it's a VA panel, and it's not that expensive. I'm not sure I would call it budget, but it's definitely not crazy expensive, and 550 nits is very, very, very bright. All right, so they actually packaged it sandwiched between there. It looks like really good packaging. Did get pretty banged up on this edge, but it doesn't look like anything happened there. We're gonna have to do this on the floor. Okay, so right away, you got the manual installation stickers. You've got an HDMI cable, a display port cable. It actually looks like a pretty nice one. And then it looks like you have some mounting screws for mounting the stand probably on it. All right, and here's the rest of it. You have a USB type B cable. They actually give you all the cables you need. And this is the power connector. And this is actually really good because it's not using one of those like converters. It's just taking it right from the wall. These are super easy to get. So if you ever use this, you can go and get one of those on Amazon super cheap. And this is the bottom plate, which is massive. Look at how big that is. That is so large. This thing is gonna be stable. And then this is the height adjustable part that hooks onto the back of the monitor. And Right from a grant glance, this thing looks really nice. It's got the height adjustableness right there. Tough gaming printed on the back. Get their logo up there. It looks really nice. All right, but what you really want to see, the monitor itself. That looks great, just like uh, some of the other Asus monitors I've used before. But the best way to do this is actually to attach the stand before actually taking this out and just putting it on the back right there. So this one is actually just a screw in on the bottom. So all you do is line the stands up right there and then screw the bottom in. And this is not like LG's, some of LG's monitors that are like this really flimsy one. You can actually just hand tighten this in there. Now if that's all in there, we gotta attach it to the monitor. We gotta do it with these screws and they actually include a screwdriver in there for you. All right, so let's get this thing screwed on there. Okay, the stand's all in. That was a pretty easy and quick process. They also include these little rubber pieces that actually go on the back of the screws to make the design a little bit cleaner. I'm gonna do that just because they included it, but we're probably never gonna look at the back of this anyway. So you can see it cleans the look up a little bit. All right, but now the big moment, let's get this thing up on the desk. And here it is in all its glory, 34 inches. Now I'm gonna say this stand is so big and I actually don't mind it. It's out of the way, it's very wide. But look at this, it's almost the length of the monitor. Probably about an inch, two inches off. That's crazy. I wanna see if it swivels. It does swivel, it swivels just a little bit. Although it is pretty, pretty large, so it is a little bit more than you would think. And it tilts, yes. Does it rotate? It does not rotate. Although it does have really nice, smooth height adjustability. I mean, this is on the level of LG. It really is. Let's take this sticker off and get this thing plugged in and boot up some Warzone. And let's see the initial impression because I'm so excited to see this thing for the first time. All right, I got all the peripherals set up, but let's get this thing turned on and see the initial reaction. Okay, it looks pretty bright so far. Okay, from the jump, it is not bright, but that's probably just because of the mode, so let's switch it over. Okay, brightness is at half. Let's turn this thing to max. Whoa. Holy crap, that is a bright monitor right there. It literally, look at the camera. I gotta turn this thing down. Okay, look at how dim I am. This is a very well lit room. Windows open, two lights on. This thing is bright. This thing's so bright. I'm gonna try to turn it there, kind of in between. We gotta launch up some Warzone. You guys know we have to do it. All right guys, right off the bat, I've heard that this monitor, it is a VA panel, but it has much less ghosting than a lot of VA panels. Some VA panels have a lot of ghosting. That will be in my full review of this monitor, which I'll do a very comprehensive review. So if you wanna see that, definitely subscribe to my channel. It'll probably already be out by the time you're watching this video. But let's see how this thing games. All right, so just looking at the colors, there's not that much of a color shift. I don't know if it's because it's curved and it just increases the, or decreases the color shift. However, with VA panels, colors are gonna get a little bit more washed out the farther you go with the viewing angles. Although it's nothing like a TN panel, although it's not quite as nice as an IPS panel, but this thing is actually not that bad. And from what I've seen so far, just from the little bit I'm doing, ghosting is not even close to what other panels that I've used that are VA panels have, which is like a huge reason that you might wanna get this monitor We'll see that in the full review. Yeah, I mean, this thing almost looks like an IPS with its ghosting, that's crazy. All right, the first thing right away is this is a super bright room that I'm in right now, 
And this thing is so bright. It's like the perfect brightness. I honestly could not believe it uh, when I first heard that it's 550 nits. That's ridiculous. But I can definitely see it now. I mean, bright room, like you'll see reflections. You'll see reflections normally, even with bright screens, 400 nits uh, with the brightness, like you can see it when it's dark screen. But then when anything like that comes on, it's just gone. So even with direct sunlight, uh, I mean, obviously if it's like five o'clock and you're getting like direct sunlight, any monitor really uh, is gonna have reflections, but this thing cancels out so many of the reflections because of the brightness. And it's just enjoyable to play games at a very nice bright screen. This thing looks so premium. Let's do some gaming. Oh guys, this is such an enjoyable experience to game on. This might be one of my favorite monitors that I've just reviewed off of just first impressions. Now there might be other things wrong with it, uh, but so far it's so freaking nice. The brightness is unbelievable to play in full like daylight. I don't have to close the sh blinds or the shades, not even a little bit. It just feels, oh, it's so good. The colors are really good. The contrast ratios are great because it's a VA panel. But besides that, I don't know what my aim was there. I'm just trying to focus on talking, but the colors because of the brightness are really good. They're so good because it's so bright with a contrast ratio of a VA panel and having it super bright, it makes this really pretty display. Now this is 1440p, uh, which is more than enough, maybe not more than enough, but probably the perfect amount for an ultra wide of 34 inches. You go 30 inches, you're gonna want more. But for 34 inches, that's what I run as a daily driver. It's a 34 inch ultra wide with 1440p. Uh, this one's 165 hertz. My daily driver is 144. Not that big of a difference. You're not gonna notice it. However, this is so freaking nice to game on. I don't wanna stop. But that is my first impression of the Asus GV1B. VG1B, not... Yeah. Again, if you do want to go check out the specs and everything else for yourself, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, and Canada. But I highly recommend subscribing to my channel because I'm going to have a full review, very comprehensive review of this monitor after using it for quite a while as my daily driver every day. What I'm hoping is that this thing can outdo my LG for much less money and maybe make this my daily, daily driver every single day. But definitely go watch my full review of this thing if it's out by now. But this was Type-C Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys later.